What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Now, as you probably gathered from the title of this video, we are going to be crocheting one of the sweater vests from the show Wednesday. She wore a few different ones. There was that like larger patchwork one, which was definitely knit, but I saw this one, the one with the smaller patchwork, and I was like, that's 100% crochet. I did find the original designer. I will link her down below. And she mentioned that she worked the best in panels, which is what I was planning to do for this tutorial. Anyway, per usual, I will be walking through the whole process, but for a more detailed stitch by stitch breakdown, I will release a pattern that will be in the description below. Um, without any further ado, we can go ahead and get into it. Now, in terms of supplies, I'm going to be using the Karen Simply Soft yarn. Um, I use this one a lot. You can pick it up at Michael's. These colors are black and off-white. And I'm using a four milliliter hook. If you haven't done the checkerboard stitch before, I'm going to link a tutorial that is super, super helpful and explains it a lot better than I could. Okay, I will still make my best effort at explaining how to do the checkerboard. You want to start off by chaining 19. That's nine stitches for each square plus one chain for turning. In this pattern, the chain at the beginning of a row is always a turning chain. It doesn't count as a stitch. So once we've chained 19, we're going to half double crochet into the first chain next to the hook. And you're going to repeat this until you have completed eight half double crochet. And once you reach the ninth half double crochet, this is the last one for the black and it's time to switch to the white. So right before you yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete the stitch, you're actually going to do this in the white yarn instead. And at this point, we're going to be crocheting in the white, but you want to make sure you still carry the black yarn with you as you go. Um, this is uh, what allows you to do the checkerboard or any design where you're switching colors very frequently. Now, once you've completed nine half double crochet in the white, you're going to chain once and turn your work. Now, we are still going to be working in the white yarn, but you have to take that black yarn from the first row, pull it up and continue to carry it through. And you might notice that you can kind of see the black yarn when you do this, but it's okay because this will be on the back side of the checkerboard. Now it's going to be the same as the first row. You do your eight half double crochet. Once you reach the ninth one, um, you're going to do the yarn over and pull through with the black yarn instead to switch colors. I like to pull on the white yarn or whatever color you're switching from to help keep things taut. And when you finish the second row and go to start the third, same thing we did before, you have to take the back yarn from the previous row and pull it up to keep carrying it through. So we're going to pull this white yarn up and just make sure you do it on the same side of the work because as you can see, these will all show, but the front side of the checkerboard will be clean. We've now finished one, two, three, four, five rows, and that's our first two squares. And we're going to start working in the black yarn. Um, so do your chain one in the black, but make sure the white is kind of leading towards the back. And we're going to turn our work and start crocheting in the black yarn, but pull up the white yarn to make sure that we're carrying it through, same as we did before. And you're just going to, as you guessed, probably switch to the white yarn on the ninth half double crochet and do this four or five rows and switch your colors again, yada yada. And you will end up with a panel that looks like this. Okay, hello, welcome back. It is the next day. And as you can see, I have this long panel of squares. This is like the over the shoulder piece. I decided to work it continuously instead of doing a front and a back because it connects anyway. In terms of length, this is 24 squares long. So 12 squares in the front and 12 squares in the back. And I'm going to obviously have another one of these over here and then a panel of squares in the center front and the center back. So now that I have this, I'm going to kind of measure on my body and then sketch out exactly what I want the pattern pieces to look like. So here is what I sketched out. I will call out that my checkerboard squares are a little bit bigger than the original, so just keep that in mind. We did our shoulder panel already, and now we need to make the center back panel, which is going to be 12 squares long, and the center front panel, which is gonna be like eight and a half squares long. All right, we're back and fresh out of the shower, obviously. Uh, this is my big bird robe. The red stains are hair dye, by the way. I didn't kill anyone. Um, point is, we finished our checkered panels, so we have shoulder panel one, shoulder panel two. These are each 24 squares long. And then we have our center back panel, which is 11 squares long. So it's gonna be like a curve in the back. And then we have our center front panel, which has, you know, these little triangles because it's gonna be our V-neck. So let me show you how I did these triangles. Once you have finished your eight squares, it's time to do the half square. As you can see, we have two stitches left in the row for this color, and we're going to half double crochet them together, which means you're going to yarn over 
insert our hook, pull through, insert our hook into the second stitch, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. Now we're going to chain once and turn our work. At this point you would normally have double crochet into that first stitch, but we're actually going to go into the second one instead. And then you're just going to half double crochet down the rest of the row. At this point we are going to chain once, turn our work, and you're going to half double crochet into the first stitch as we usually do, not the second one. And you're going to repeat this until you have completed four half double crochet. And once you've done that, you should have three stitches left in the row, as you can see here. And we are going to half double crochet stitches five and six together and basically just not touch the last stitch from the previous row. Chain once, turn your work, half double crochet into the second stitch, not the first, and just repeat this over and over again. I will say for this part, the pattern is particularly helpful because you get like a row by row breakdown. But if you just do this over and over again, you will get to a point um, where you only have one stitch and your triangle's done. Now to repeat this in the white, you're going to attach a new piece of white yarn in the same place where you had that last black stitch. And then as you can see, we are half double crocheting the first two stitches together because you're basically mirroring exactly what you did on the other side. And you should end up with a front center panel that looks like this and is the start of our v-neck. But yeah, now that we have all our checkered panels, it's time to create the black panels that will connect everything. Now the first black panel I want to focus on is this front one. It connects the top of the triangle we just made and curves up to the shoulder, so like around the 11th or 12th square of the shoulder panel. Now I didn't want this to be as wide as a checkered panel, so I've only chained 11, and I'm going to half double crochet into the first chain next to the hook, and just repeat this down the row, chain once, turn your work, and you're just building out a rectangle essentially. You want a strip that's going to be the same length as nine checkerboard squares. What I will call out is that the checkerboard, because you're carrying two yarns through, it's not the same sizing or gauge as the black yarn, so you can't really use a number of rows to equate length. You just have to crochet until you have the right length, which for me was, I think, 51 rows of the black. And at this point, we want to start our curve to connect up to the shoulder. And to start building out the curve, it's going to be very similar to what we did for the front checkered panel. So once you have two stitches left in the row, you're going to half double crochet those two stitches together, same way as we did before. Um, then you're going to chain once, turn your work, and half double crochet into the second stitch from the hook, work your way down that row, then chain once, turn your work, um, half double crochet into the first stitch, not the second. The only difference between this and what we did for the front checkered panel is that we are going to half double crochet until we have two stitches left in the row and then half double crochet them together instead of skipping the very last stitch. And that's because we want this curve to not be as steep as the curve that we used for the checkered panel, if that makes any sense. But you will eventually end up with a row that has only one stitch in it. And as you can see, it fits perfectly between our two checkered panels. Now for the back black panels, it's very straightforward. It's just a rectangle that's 10 stitches wide in the same length as 12 checkerboard squares. Okay, welcome to my living room, aka the only place in my apartment where the lighting isn't abysmal at night. Um, my hair looks crazy, but I've upgraded the bathrobe to this black hoodie. Since we have finished all our front and, pack, front and back pieces, I think I'm going to go ahead and start connecting the pieces we have so far, because I'd like to try it on and then figure out exactly how wide I want those side pieces to be. Now in terms of connecting the panels, I really wish I had a better explanation for this, but I basically just take a yarn needle, I come in from the back, I stick it through the side of one panel, and then into the side of another panel, and then I just pull it tight. What I will say is that with the white squares, you can sometimes see the black yarn on the side of the square from when you were sort of carrying the color through as you crocheted. So I like to make sure that I put my yarn needle on top of that little bit of black yarn so that the edges of the white squares are nice and neat. And then once everything is connected, you have this smooth curve and this nice clean edge. All right, welcome to yet a, another new background. I am actually back home in SoCal for the holidays. So this is my childhood bedroom, or I guess the door frame of my childhood bedroom. Anyway, point is, um, we finished attaching the panels. This is what I did on my long ass flight home. It looks like this. I feel like I should try it on for you guys, but do I need to take my hat off? Because my hair looks fucking crazy without the hat, but actually, ugh. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take the hat off because this style combination is very questionable. Right, so this is what it looks like right now. Very cute. 
Like I mentioned before, the squares are definitely a little bit bigger than the original and the neckline is a little lower, but that was just my personal preference. You could obviously adjust. And the next step is just figuring out like how wide we want those um, side panels to be. I kind of want a more oversized fit, so I feel like I might make them the same width as these checker panels, but I need to mess around with it a little bit and see. But we were almost done, yay! As you can see, I already started the side panel. It's just a rectangle the same way we did before, except it's 16 half double crochet wide instead of 10. And it is the same length as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven checkerboard squares. And at this point, we want to add like a little bit of curve to the edges to make a round armhole instead of, you know, a square one. Now to get the curve, it's the exact same thing I did on the front black panel. So I'm going to do two half double crochet, then half double crochet stitches three and four together. Um, chain once, turn your work. And you guessed it, half double crochet into the second stitch from the hook. You're just going to repeat this until you have a little curve. And you want to repeat it on the other side. So I'm attaching a new piece of yarn and doing the exact same process until you have something that looks like this. Um, here I'm re-watching season five of Love Island because that's the best season. But all we have to do is sew these side panels to the rest of the vest. Last step is adding a single crochet border along the armholes, the neckline, and the bottom of the vest. If you're dealing with like weird gaping, like your armholes are flaring out a little bit, you can also skip a few stitches as you do this and it will kind of help cinch it in. And this is totally optional, but on the back corner of the vest, when I'm working the single crochet, I will actually do like one single, then one half double, then a double, and then a triple, and slip stitch that into the second row of this black square and then continue as normal. And it gives you a little bit more of like a curved finish on your neckline. All right, believe it or not, we are all done. Here's what the front looks like. So there's the back. Um, I will say that if I were making this just for my personal wear, I probably would have taken some squares off the bottom and gone for like a cropped boxy moment, but I wanted to stay true to the original. <clears throat> Jeez. I will also say that it's definitely a wider fitting vest. As you can see, it's pretty far out on the shoulders. So if you want a slimmer fit, I would recommend um, making these squares smaller or making these black panels a little bit narrower. But yeah, now I might try it on over the button up with the braids, just like in the spirit of Wednesday. Although I don't think I would look very good in those braids. Y'all, why do I look 12 years old? Um, also because I just trimmed my hair, so my braids are fucking sproutlings. But it's fine, we're committing to the Wednesday look. I wish I had her leather... Oh, I do have a leather jacket. Please hold. Okay, I'm convinced that this is really gonna help with the looking like an elementary school child. An elementary school child. Okay, see, actually I really am kind of giving Wednesday now, but um, this is the finished look. I will leave the pattern and supplies in the description down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, yada yada. You can follow my Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and Amazing Ish Grace, same handle. Um, that's where I post a lot of my inspo works in progress. And if you have any questions about the pattern or the tutorial or commissions, you can drop a comment below or DM me on Instagram. Why are there sunglasses in my pocket? Is this what's going to complete our look? Oh yeah, there we go. Um, and with that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.